Hello, I'm the Media Wiz, because one art form wasn't enough. And since we haven't talked about one of these kind of things in a while, let's talk about a web animation. Well, last time I did something like this, it was when I reviewed the pilots for Haspen Hotel, Hell of a Boss, and Long Gone Gulch. Ever since then, it seems like Long Gone Gulch is still kind of stuck in its own little development hell that hasn't really gotten off the ground, but apparently they are working on it. As for Haspen Hotel, we have been getting some consistent updates, and it seems like the show is still going forward. The characters are getting some minor redesigns, and yeah, unfortunately, it seems like most of the cast is getting replaced, but I'm still going to try and look at it with an open heart and an open mind. And as for Hell of a Boss, they are almost done their first season, and once they actually complete it, I promised that I would actually do a full overview of the first season, and yeah, like a lot of other people, I'm just waiting for season one to be done. I will say this though, seven out of the eight episodes so far, the season is pretty damn good. Unlike last time, we're going to talk about a series that only has a few videos to its name. The series in question is The Guardians of Pondonia. Did somebody say Guardians of Pondonia? Um... Yeah? Well, I don't know if you happen to know this media with, but it seems that this web series in particular has caught in the eye of the brony fandom. What with its talking magical pony main character Athena and all. You want to do this as a crossover, don't you? Would I ever? But first, let's do a little bit of background about the person who put this whole thing together. Okay, so Sean Keller is an animator who started on a lot of animated classics throughout the years. He's worked for Disney, Don Bluth, DreamWorks, and Warner Brothers before turning to doing art and videos online. He also seems to be pretty well regarded in the furry community. I guess that's something. This is the second web series I'll be covering that was made by an open furry after Vivzy Pop. As far as I can tell, I'm not sure if Sean was a regular brony or watched a lot of MLP and got inspired by this, but from the brony feedback I've heard, it seems like the brony fandom welcomed this series with open arms. So let's talk about Sean Keller's pony opus, The Guardians of Pondonia. Well, this first video wastes no time, as we're introduced to our main character, Athena. She's the head soldier of this Equestria-like land called Pondonia, and she keeps peace between three feuding pony nations, but that's more elaborated on in the second video of the series. For now, here's what she has to say. Last week, as you may remember, we captured the villain of Pondonia, Lustrous. And I would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for you and that pesky audience. Maybe next time, Lustrous. So this week, we have a celebration happening in Happyville. Only a couple seconds in, and still more has happened in this than the entirety of MLPG3. And it doesn't stop there, because believe me, things are about to get nuts really quick. And... Huh? <laughs> oh, hold on there, Missy. I needed to go on a mission. Um... Is that man okay? I would make a joke that he's drunk right now, but later on in the video, they explicitly reference the fact that he's an alcoholic, so it makes perfect sense that he's acting like that. I come from a land of mystery, of alcohol and monsters. So the human says that he's a wizard from a far off world and that he needs her help. They make it back to his bunker lair area, and as you'd expect, there's a bunch of computer monitors and booze to keep him company. Well, I guess we can safely say this doesn't follow Equestria Girl's rules, since he doesn't turn into a pony in her world and she doesn't turn into a human in his. Eh, yeah, seems about right, especially considering what this man is capable of doing later in the video. I'm really parched. Do you mind if I have some? Yeah. Knock yourself out. Thankies! Uh, limited with about uh, three shots of vodka. But doesn't he know? The only kind of drinks like that that ponies can have is Apple Family Cider. After that, Hunter S. Thompson here tells her about the threat that she has to help him stop. Something involving a spider bridge and a vortex that's unleashing apes. What is the threat? Ape vortexes. <sighs> Ape vortexes? Yes. And what comes to these vortexes? Apes. Uh, apes? These are the ancient prototypes in which all life has derived from. Yes. These vile creatures are invading our world, spreading their alcoholism and degenerate behavior. Now there's plenty of joke material in that one statement alone, but I'm gonna refrain. Before we can assume that the human here has ulterior motives, we see Athena head off into the IRL night and comes across the spider bridge. What 
was I supposed to say for situations like this? Oh yeah, I got a bad feeling about this. Huh, the new Paranormal Activity movies really took a weird turn. There's no spiders here. This must have been some silly joke. <laughs> ADD spiders are a real thing? I need to get closer for skill. Possibly touch it. Touch it? I'll touch it. Oh, Pinkie Pie would be so honored to see a pony breaking the fourth wall like that. After asking for directions from this guy, the wizard finally reveals that he has the ability to shapeshift and transforms into a werewolf, and he finally reveals the real reason why he brought this pony warrior into his dimension. Doom de bloom! Ow! I forgot how big this thing is. The whole ape vortex was just a complete ruse. I just did this to ask her out on a date. Eh, the wizard is a clopper, confirmed. I mean, if friendship is magic can pretty much make it canon that there's interspecies relationships between ponies, dragons, griffins, changelings, and yaks, I guess werewolves aren't entirely out of the question. <laughs> I have this feeling that I'm being stalked by a, well, something wacky or a werewolf. <laughs> a werewolf? So after Wizard S. Werewolf and Athena have a chase scene, clearly parodying old Hanna-Barbera cartoons, and believe me, this is far from the last Hanna-Barbera reference you're gonna get in this video, we get this terrifying reveal. EVIL SHAPE No, 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 that'd just be ridiculous. No. Instead, it turns out the ape vortexes are actually real. <laughs> ape vortexes are real? What is that? That, my dear lady, is Siren Apehead. <laughs> dear God, it's like the love child between Siren Head and one of Oni and G's monkey videos. After another chase that results in a failed attempt at hiding in an old abandoned dynamite shack, we then see this. Muttley, do something! <laughs> What's he saying? This machine this little imp is asking for a medal in exchange for his services. You got one on you? Um, nope. Imagine fighting the cheapskates. Oh, yeah, I, I I, don't get it. The character is Muttley from the old Wacky Races series that Hanna-Barbera had. See? I told you it wasn't the last Hanna-Barbera reference you were going to get. And thus, the video ends with the two of them heading back to his bunker and drinking some margaritas. Oh, and then the evil Queen Chrysalis type pony from the beginning has escaped. <laughs> Huzzah, everyone, and welcome to another adventures in The Destroyers of Pondonia! Well, I learned a valuable lesson today. Use four shots of tequila instead of three. Uh, I was the pilot for Guardians of Pondonia, and it's pretty fun. Keller seems like a very talented and funny guy, and it really shows, not just with these videos, but his other ones as well. From integrating animated characters into live action, and just the general production as a whole, even when parts come off a little shoddy, it feels like it's intentional. Similar to when YouTubers like Filthy Frank used to break character every so often. It's not too distracting of a flub, and it's at least funny the very few times they do it. No problem. Then after that, you can come with me to Site F. Site F for those... <clears throat> Site F for those that may not know. Some of the reference humor might come off as a bit random, but it honestly didn't bug me. From the funny banter between the main characters, the great animation, fun throwbacks to nostalgic cartoons, and enough unique personality all throughout it, I'd love to see where this Guardian of Pondonia series goes. Besides, I'd rather see an animated fan character end up in the human world done like this, instead of seeing it done like this. I am a hedgehog. A hedgehog? Wait, wait, wait. Hedgehogs can't talk? Oh, but do they dance? The original video was uploaded last year in 2021, and since then we've gotten two update videos and a proper second episode just a couple weeks ago. So if you're curious, and especially if you love ponies, check out Guardians of Pondonia. Since this video involved 2D characters interacting in a live-action world and interdimensional travel and all that kind of thing, do you think that maybe we should do that for this video? Meh. Not entirely sure if we should. Eh, that's fair enough, I guess. 
Well, until next time, Media Wiz, I'm going to go back to playing goofball with the other fanboys and fangirls. Until next time, I'm the Pony Fanboy. I fanboy over ponies, and you just listen. And I'm the Media Wiz, because one art form wasn't enough. Sixty frames a second. Sixty frames a second. Sixty frames a second. Sixty frames a second. Sixty frames. Oh. <gasps>